Hi, this is Felix Schwartz and I'm excited to show you what you can do with your remote control using Remote Buddy today. With the exception of the part demoing the configuration of Remote Buddy, everything you'll see during this presentation is being controlled with just an Apple remote. So I'll jump right in and start with the virtual input devices. Number one is the virtual mouse in combination with the mousepad feature. First, I enter the application's category of Remote Buddy's menu, then descend into the submenu for the keynote behavior. You can now see a chart of how the buttons are mapped on the left. These dynamic charts are available for all behaviors in Remote Buddy, so you don't have to memorize or look up how buttons are mapped. Further down below is a slider allowing me to change system volume, but I'm interested in Keynote's recent documents here. I select an imaginary annual report presentation from the list to load it in Keynote, then start it. Going to the next slide, I have a table. Now, if I want to highlight the growth for the last two years, I just activate the new mousepad feature and use the virtual mouse actions to move the mouse cursor over the numbers. When I'm done, I turn it off again and proceed to the next slide. Finally, I stop the presentation, enter the remote body menu and quit Keynote. Number two is the brand new virtual keyboard that I'll use to browse the web with Safari. Again, I enter the application's category, then select and launch Safari. My plan now is to visit the remote body website, so I bring up the virtual keyboard and start typing. I can shift the focus on the keys with the left, right, up and down buttons and select a key with the play button. If you have the remote body kernel extension installed, you can also hold a key by simply keeping the play button pressed, thanks to remote body's unique driver for built-in receivers. The virtual keyboard uses the key map selected for your system. It is freely resizable, supports modifier keys like Shift, Alt, Control, Option and Caps Lock and automatically displays the corresponding characters too. I'm using Safari for the demo, but the virtual keyboard is not limited to it. It can be used with every supported remote control, but you can use it with the mouse or the infrared mouse mode of a Wiimote as well. Also, you can show, hide and tackle the virtual keyboard using Apple Script or Remote Buddy's own actions at any time. So I'm done typing and select the return key to load up the website in Safari. After hiding the keyboard, the behavior for Safari is active again, so I can now use the remote to perform actions relevant to this application. In the example given, I skip through the links until I reach the supported hardware link. Then press the play button to select it. And of course, I can also scroll up and down on the website. Finally, I make use of Remote Buddies menu again to quit Safari. Last but not least, number three, the virtual remote. Remote Buddy can now emulate an Apple remote. This allows you to use software written for it even if your Mac does not have a built-in infrared receiver. First, I select a virtual remote from Remote Buddy's menu. Then I press the plus and minus buttons to trigger the system default actions. Second, I'll demonstrate using iAlertU with the emulation. For this, I switch over to the virtual mouse and launch iAlertU from the dock. Once iAlertU has launched, I use the menu to switch back to the virtual remote. I can now arm and disarm iAlertU with my remote control. Next, I'll give you an overview on how Remote Buddy ties audio and video software together through its menu. I'll begin with music by selecting iTunes from Remote Buddy's menu. Let's then have a quick look at Remote Buddy's support for iTunes full screen cover flow mode. In that mode, you can browse through the covers of the music in your current playlist. However, Remote Buddy's music browser is a more efficient way to access your music. To access all music by Rob Dugan, I enter the artist category of Remote Buddy's music browser. Instead of wading through a list of almost 700 artists, I take the shortcut to letter R, select Rob Dugan, then one of his albums and can now pick from its tracks. I hide the menu after selecting a track. Remote Buddy can inform you on track changes with an information cell and allows writing a track via the remote in and outside of the menu. Back in the menu, I again have access to all tracks of the same album and can pick a different one with just one button press. Rob has been contributing to both Matrix soundtracks, so let's have a look at that. While Remote Buddy picks just his track on the soundtrack, I can easily access all other tracks through the menu too. Ok, so let's have a look at the front row integration next. I'll first choose front row from the menu and open it. I'm sorry that you can't see the animation, it's happening but not recorded properly by Snaps Pro X. I'm going through the menu to select now playing. Now, if I want to quickly exit front row, I use front row quick exit and this way I leave it with just one button press. 
Having quit Front Row, I now step over to the movie library of Will C and DVD player. Using it, I can launch VideoTS folders remote buddy located via Spotlight. It even attaches covers found in parent folders. Leaving the context menu of the Real C behavior, I am now heading for the ITV behavior. Once ITV is running, you can access and playback your recordings complete with previews and metadata through Remote Buddies menu. You can also browse and select your TV channels through the menu or switch over to ITV's full screen menu mode and use a remote control to navigate through it. If you want to access something that is not part of the previously shown libraries, you can use Remote Buddies built-in file browser to locate any file on your system. If I want to load and play the video file on my desktop, I go to Files, descend into the desktop folder and select the application I want to open it with, here, QuickTime Player. I can immediately start playing the movie or go to full screen mode thanks to Remote Buddy automatically picking the right behavior for me. I can also open the context menu for QuickTime Player, show and hide it or quit it altogether. Other parts of Remote Buddy focus on giving you control over important low level system functions. For example, if you want to quit or even force quit a running application, you descend into the system category, select the application manager and easily quit the application in question. Also available in the system category are the screen settings. They give you full control of the parameters of each screen by allowing you to pick a different resolution and depth, change the main screen, toggle mirroring, move Remote Buddy's menu or adjust screen brightness. Finally, you can also activate your screensaver, sleep, shut down or reboot your computer using Remote Buddy. Now over to a special tidbit for all those with built-in IR receivers. Thanks to Remote Buddy you can now use multiple upper remotes and map them differently. Or if you have a programmable remote control, you could now theoretically have up to 1500 buttons for usage with your Mac. Ok, so how is this set up? First, I enter the preferences, select the hardware tab and check the checkbox for enabling support for multiple remote controls. Then, I add a new logical remote and name it Emulation. Logical remotes can be assigned to any number of real remotes, which show up in the right table by their internal ID as soon as you press one of their buttons. I changed the mapping of the logical remote I just created so that the plus and minus buttons use Remote Buddy's upper remote emulation to emulate virtual presses of the same buttons. This will trigger the default system actions to increase and decrease volume. I leave the default logical remote unchanged so it will use Remote Buddy's own actions to change system volume. Time for prime time. I subsequently press the menu buttons on both real upper remotes so they turn up in the table to the right. I attach the logical remote I created to the upper remote with ID 141. If I press the plus and minus buttons on the upper remote with ID 171, Remote Buddy's default actions are triggered. If I press the same buttons on the upper remote with ID 141, I trigger the actions of my Quest 10 to change the volume. Changing a button configuration is as simple as it could be too. If you for example want to change the button mapping for the iTunes behavior from changing iTunes volume to the system volume, you simply click on the respective entries and select the new action. In this case, this is the increase and decrease system volume actions from the audio, CD and DVD behavior. One click per button. Couldn't be easier. If you have special needs or only need a fraction of what Remote Buddy has in store for you, you can easily create your own custom menu within minutes using drag and drop. Therefore, I enter Preferences, change to the Menu tab and select the Manage Profiles item from the drop-down menu. There, I create a new profile and name it Simple Profile. After selecting the profile, I can start dragging and dropping actions, behaviors, screen settings, smart folders, special elements and file system objects to any place in the menu. I can also create folders to logically group items in a submenu or drag in a folder from the finder. You can instantly use the menu you created and even switch back and forth between different profiles with your remote control. It took only 2.5 minutes to create the menu shown here. I'd like to close this presentation with some quick facts on Remote Buddy. First of all, it has the best hardware support available. It is supporting a big range of third-party remote controls and receivers, allowing you to add an upper remote to PowerPC Max and the Mac Pro. Remote Buddy's own kernel extension ensures compatibility with OS 10.4.9. It also minimizes the reaction time to button presses and maximizes your possibilities. Remote Buddy ships pre-bundled with more than 70 behaviors for direct control of browsers, players, viewers, TV, media center, media management and presentation apps, games and system functions. You can build your own behaviors very easily using the built-in behavior construction kit or if you need OS X API access with CrossCode. Sample code is available. I invite you to visit our website for more information. Have a lot of fun with Remote Buddy and thanks for watching.